Hello everyone, uh, in this video we are going to see how to configure the master in the software and we are going to see how to read the data from a temperature controller. Okay, so let's configure the master first. So let's go to the program block. So in the previous video we saw how to configure the uh, you know the communication module. So now let's go to the program block. Okay, so we need to do one more thing. So let's set up the IP address of the PLC. So uh, in our uh, lab, our IP address is for this PLC is 0 0.11. Okay, I'm just changing it to that. Then on my uh, PLC's configuration, I'll just add the enable the system and clock memory. System and clock memory. So enable the use of system memory byte, enable the use of clock memory byte. Okay, that's it. So now let's save it once and just do a raw compile. Okay, just to you know see if there is any errors in our configuration. So there is no error. There are some warnings which can be neglected. Let's go to the main block. So now we are going to start the programming. So let's see here. So for the programming, uh, we need to first of all enable the Modbus master block. So for that, we just have to go to the communication processor here on the communication uh, instruction tab. Go to not the Modbus RT or PTP, you have to go to Modbus here and you have to go to MB COM load. So this is the PTP module configuration for Modbus RTU. So here first of all you need to do the configuration, load the configuration first. Then you should then you should uh, do the master block. So let's say MB COM load here. Let's add it here. So here we have the COM load. So the COM load has to be executed during the beginning of the program. So whenever the PLC starts, it, this should execute only once, not continuously, it should ex execute only once. So you can go here. So let's say click enable, let's say put request. So the enable I will give the first scan. So this is what we enabled in the clock uh, on the system and clock memory, first scan, first scan. So now it is asking for a port number. So where do we, where do I find this port number? So you can go to your device configuration, you can go to your Modbus device and you can see in the system constants the port number of the device, it is 269. So this is the hardware identifier. So you go to the main block. So if you directly type 269, it will not take, okay, it will not take. So it, it will take but it will not show the correct value. So you, what you can do, you can click on the three lines here, you can, you can see the local CB141 port R485. And just click enter. You can see it will automatically take the port number as 269. Okay. You can directly enter 269 as well. It's okay. But this will show you the exact port address. So if you have two, uh, two Modbus modules, one in the CPU as a communication board and one in the left hand extension module, then you have two options. 269 will be there and 270 might be there. So the, the hardware identifier number changes as, as you add your devices. Okay. Next, we need to enter our baud rate. So the baud rate that we are going to use as I said will be 9600 and the parity will be 0. 0 means none parity, 1 means odd parity and 2 means even parity. So I am going to use the 0 parity. Okay. Then it is asking for a MBDB. This is asking for a MBDB. So the MBDB, before if you want to know the what you have to give in the MBDB means so you have to first of all create the Modbus master. You have to create the Modbus master. So let's drag and drop the Modbus master here. So this is the one that says whether you are going to use your PLC as a master or a slave. So in this in these videos, in the first few videos, we will see how to use it as a master and finally we will see how to use it as a slave. Okay. So here you have an enable and a request. You have an enable and a request. So what we can do, we can leave this enable as it is. You don't have to separately give a command to enable. Uh, for the request, what I will do, we need a cyclic request. So what we will do is we need to get data continuously. So what I will do, I will give the clock cycle. So M0.5 will be okay. It's a 1 hertz clock. 1 hertz clock means half a second on and half a second off. So if you think this is too slow, you can increase the speed as well. It doesn't matter. But half a second should be a good uh, time. But as, as I was you know explaining in the other videos, maybe you would have heard about it. Uh, so Modbus is not a very fast protocol. It's a slow protocol because it can only communicate to one device at a time and it needs to send a request, then it has to get an acknowledgement. So it all takes some time. So better uh, use Modbus where 
uh, you know uh, real time communication is not that critical okay okay maybe a second delay one second delay two second delay is okay then it's better to use modbus in all other cases if you need very high speed communication it's better to go with um, ethernet ip or profinet or profibus these kind of communication protocols which is real time a real time maybe with one or two millisecond of delay so it's better to go that then we have to go for the mb address so we first before this we have to decide what um, you know device we are going to use and before that we need to give the mbdb so this is the mbdb means the modbus master or slave db address so you have to copy this address okay copy the db of the mb master and paste it here okay copy the db it's not a new db it's the same db copy the name of the mb master and just paste it there okay right so now we have to decide what device we are going to read the data from so for that the device we are going to use is a autonix tk 4s tk 4s uh, temperature controller so this is the device that we are going to use this is the device we are going to use let me show you the device it's a good device it, it is a standalone pad controller but it also has a communication function in particular models so what we are going to do is we are going to read the temp uh, current temperature and we will also set the uh, temperature to the device okay so this is the device okay so let me show you the device in person as well so let's say camera and you can see here. so this is the device tk4s with communication so here what i'm going what i'm using is i'm using a modbus communication so this plus and this minus is going to the plc that it is interchanged in the cable connection okay so now you can see the current temperature is 24 the set point is set as 30 so this is what we are going to change okay with our system let's minimize this so we know the device now and you can also see in the as per the image the modbus address is 3 uh, the communication protocol is uh, 9600 bits per second uh, 8 data bits 1 stop bit and no parity okay 8 n 1 that is what we call 8 n 1 okay uh, let's go to our software now so now we know what device we are using so the mb address means the device address so device means the slave id so slave id will be 3 then we have the mb mode so this is very very important so in modbus we have multiple modes multiple modes means so if you want to read a single data there is a mode when you want to read multiple data there is a mode when you want to write a single data there is a mode when you want to write multiple data there is a mode so let me give an example on that so modbus modes so let me show you images um, so not modbus modes modbus function codes yes let's say let's take this this is a good example okay you can see here see so the function code 1 means it is read coil 2 means read contacts 5 means write single coil 15 means write multiple coil 3 means read holding registers 4 means read input registers so here holding register means you can read and write okay this is an integer data type so in modbus there is no 32 bit data types there is only 16 bit data types in modbus okay so this i will explain in a separate video then there is there are input registers input registers means three series registers which starts with the number three so this means uh, this is an input register where you cannot write but read from the slave you know write to the slave you can only read from the slave then we have uh, write multiple register read multiple register so based on what uh, activity you are going to perform on the modbus slave we have to select the modbus code here so in siemens what they have done is they have done something called as mode in which multiple function codes are grouped together to make a mode so if i go here and click on help so f1 so f1 is your uh, good friend in siemens so you, you get the help window so in the help window you can see that so the mode so if you go to mode it will say see the uh, modbus function 1 2 3 and 4 is coming under mode 0 so what is 1 2 3 and 4 so read output bit read input bit or read contact or read coils read holding register okay you can say what they are saying read single register or up to multiple up to 125 registers per query 125 registers per query per query means uh, at one instance you can read 125 
16 bit registers from the slip so similarly if you are going to write the function the mode will be one the mode will be one so this is what they are mentioning here okay so let's minimize this. so here in our case we are going to read a holding register that i will say i will example i will explain what we are going to do so first of all we are going to read the present value read current temperature okay so read current temperature from temperature controller from tc okay so the mode will be zero so the temperature here we need to find out now the mod bus registers of the device so let's go and find out that so if you go if you go online you can find the Modbus uh, manual for the TK series uh, controllers and we need to find in which register the current temperature is reading, reading out. So you can see here, so the present temperature is read at 301001, so which is a holding, it is a uh, input register and the value is not in decimal, the value is not in decimal, it is a integer value because it is only taking one register if it is taking two registers 301001 and 301002 together it means it is a real data type register so here we are only going to use uh, rounded values there is no point values here so we will also read a multifunction meter in which i will also show you how to do uh, double word registers as well okay so here the address we are going to read is 301001 301001 so let's minimize this Let's give the address 301001. Then we have to give the data length. So how much data we are going to read? So as per our uh, requirement, you can see that we need to read only one data because only we need only this register for the present value. So let's minimize this. So I'm going to read one value. So and it is asking for a data pointer where the value, where the red value should be stored. So let's create one uh, data block maybe for that. So let's say I will create one uh, DB or I can even use a MW address. So let's say go to PLC tag, create new tag. Let's say I will create uh, MW 100. Sorry, let's say present PV, present value. So it is going to be integer and the data address will be MW 100. So on the main block, so I'll just uh, give the tag that we created. Present value. So in this, so I can just type MW100 here. So it's the present value of the controller. So now here we have some error configuration. So let's add this as well. So done, we will set it to, so we can go into the DB of the MBCOM load. So it already will have that particular data present. So you can just show that. So MBCOM load DB error and mb compload db status okay done now here also if you want you can add the done bit but we can actually monitor it without it so now what we have to do we have to save the project okay save it do a compile okay so there is no error as of now and do a complete download so right click download to device hardware and software okay only changes are all should be fine Let's do a search. Let's see whether we can find our PLC. <clears throat> so it is online. The PLC is online. <clears throat> okay. 0 0.11. So I have two PLCs running. So this is a DC, DC, DC. And this is a DC, DC relay. So the PLC we selected is a DC, DC relay. Okay. So 11. Load. So we have 11 here as well. So load. Con consider as trusted. And continue without synchronization so here stop all and load <coughs> because we are doing the hardware configuration this is because we are doing the hardware configuration so once it's download we will know whether the data is getting read or not so you can see here the current value of the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius so let's finish and minimize this and let's go online and let's see whether we got the value or not so here what happens before going to the MB master, you can see here, okay, so there is a small 
error here. You can see here there is a 8189 error. 8189 error. So what is this 8189 error? So let's before that we will also find a few more things. So you can see here this is the PLC. So the done bit would have been already enabled here. Uh, and you can see here. So it executed only once during the first scan. Now this is continuous running. So we are getting an 8189 error. Let's find out what that error is. So let's go to the help window. So an error has come. That's good for us. So 8189. So it means invalid data address value. Invalid data address value. You can see this data address. So it is the address given in the document. Correct. So you can let's say 301001. Let's go to the document. See it's 301001. So what is the problem here? And let's check uh, our uh, help also. What addresses it will support. So let's say go to mode. When you are using the mode 0. Read input word. It supports only 5 digit address. Instead of a 6 digit address. Can you see here? It only supports 5 digit address. That is 30001 to 39999. So how can I read this register if the PLC is not supporting? How can I read this register if the PLC is not supporting but if you look at the holding register you can see it is a six digit register it supports both 4001 and 400001 which is six digit and 4001 is five digits so actually these two are same data but in uh, the input word or the input register there is a problem so what we have to do is whenever you have a six digit modbus address okay consider this whenever you have a six digit modbus address and from the left okay remember from the left if the second digit is zero okay so for example in our case our address is three zero one zero zero one in this case this zero okay this zero can be neglected we can remove it without any issues but if there is a number there, for example, 311001, then that one we cannot remove. Okay. So here, as per the Modbus standard, the in, in input registers, it is only coming as five digit registers. So here the, the second digit from the left can be removed if the value is zero. So how do I remove it? Very simple. You go to the PLC and in this address, just re replace this zero with nothing. So 31001. 31001 and let's download and see whether it is working or not so if you are uh, if your device is directly giving you five digit register then you can use it directly but if your device is having six digit register then and if it is an input register you have to change it to like this change it to like this so you can see here 31001 and you can see the value it is getting red so let me just put it on the side here let me put the image here. You can see here, I'm getting the temperature 24, getting red here as 24. So if I hold the temperature sensor, so I'm holding the temperature sensor now in my hand. So you can see, it will become 25 on the meter. So it's, it's very cold. Uh, so the room is very cold actually. And even my hands are very cold. Yeah, so it became 25. Here also it became 25. So let's say let it, let it let it let's make it 26 as well so even my hand yeah 26 it's 26 here 26 26 so now we are successfully reading data okay just a single data not multiple data we are just reading a single data from a modbus device into the plc okay using rs485 communication okay so this is how you read a single data from a Modbus device into the PLC. Yes. So in the next video, we will see how to write the set point. How to write the set point. Okay. Thank you.